Well, and welcome back to the next set, Master Arena 5, round 32, between Eddie and Rubenstock. Eddie, King of Arena, Master Arena 4, actually. Let's see, Italians, Byzantines and Incas against Mayans, Teutons and Turks. Let's go into game one. We have Eddie playing as the Incas and Rubenstock as the Teutons. I need to go in here because Rubenstock is on the way to Feudal Age, sending five villages forward. He's done Loom. He has sent villages to stone, four villages actually on that main stone. And he's probably going to Tower us then. Let's go for Eddie's map. Main gold from for the main stone forward. He just in case double palisaded this corner of his base. And on the right hand side, no gates to be exploited. Open the walls to get the deer in. Now he's putting a house behind that as well. One house coming up here, and Rubenstock probably going to get the first tower up very soon. Where's the second stone from Eddie actually? That's is that his second stone? No, it's too far forward. I feel it should be somewhere else. Main stone and second stone. Safe in the back, actually. Second gold safe in the back. Third gold safe in the back. And two extra golds. And Eddie can see all of that, which is awesome for him. Tower is up, so Eddie should see that very soon now. Eddie also almost uh, up to feudal age. Neither player can really go for a monk rush because Eddie has eagle warriors and against Teutons you don't really want to monk rush here. Eddie should go with an immediate counter tower. He has cheaper towers as the Incas and he's going with a market right now here but no tower coming up yet. Interesting. Those walls are going down really fast. Quick houses so Eddie is actually walling here and he's still going to be able to click up to cast late very soon. Quick stone wall coming up I guess and Eddie saying okay I'm going to wall you out and then maybe a watch tower behind that. Ruben stocks base. Third gold and second stone forward outside, main gold forward, the second gold and the main stone safe in the back. He's got one relic here, three deer outside didn't take them, and one relic, another one here close to space. And he only got one relic close, and now Rubenstock double watchtower is in. The Teutons, of course, and ten villages per tower possible, and tower number three coming in as well. I think Eddie should go for archers right now. Experience has taught us that archers and towers are going to be really effective. Fletching coming in from Eddie as well. Rubenstock has not done that upgrade yet, and Eddie for now seems to be saved. Question is for how long? Rubenstock is not going to be able to go to Castle Age anytime soon. He's doing Wilbur, and Eddie is sending more villages to gold. Let's see how he's going to play this. And I guess we're going to wait a little bit longer for Eddie to be able to click up to Castle Age. For now, he doesn't have the food he needs. And Rubenstock starting to attack the skate. And actually, the skate is going on down pretty fast as well. I guess Eddie should stonewall right like here, here. Can he go for those towers? No, the village has been dropped into the t uh, tower immediately and Eddie doesn't have the stone for another counter tower. He's sending villages to the second stone right now. Should close the gate maybe and this one as well or just make sure the villages are not going around. That would be terrible. And Rubenstock though has given up on the idea to go through the gate. Eddie has clicked up to Castle Age. Let's go a little bit faster, see where this game is heading. Another watchtower coming up here. Yes, actually. Um, that's interesting. Rubenstock going with a lot of watchtowers on the left hand side, but Eddie is not even covering the main goal. Can you see the main goal? I think a quick, wa quick watchtower coming up from Eddie as well. Rubenstock cannot see Eddie's main goal. He cannot. The scout's line of sight is not big enough, but barely. There's just the next tile, is the main goal. And that's why he attacked on the side. I guess he could see the main stone and said, okay, let's try and go there. Tower much on the way from Rubenstock. Maybe he's going to find out about that then soon. Horse Color on the way for Eddie. And let's see, Rubenstock, not so far away from clicking up to Castle Age. Eddie, a good amount of gold in the bank. I guess the Siege Workshop will come up very soon. And then possibly Monastery and a, a second TC, something like that. Let's see what he's planning to do in this match. And we have the Monastery coming up pretty much in the middle, back middle of the map. And Bosa on the way. Rubenstock doing cartography. I want to know what this upgrade is. I still haven't found out. Is there any upgrade in the market? Blacksmith, cartography coming in, Castle Age. I don't really get it. I guess it's a bug in the overlay. I don't know. Both of being finished by Eddie and double watchtower actually in front of the main goal because Rubenstock has started to put up a watchtower here but this village just should go down. This is not going to happen and yeah, Eddie quick walling actually. Look at this. No escaping but the village is going down and Eddie for now is pretty safe. A lot of gold in the bank. Monk's coming in now and on the left hand side these watchtowers are really not doing a lot of damage here. Rubenstock clicked up to Castle Age. Eddie, are you going for any extra TCs now? The scout is inside to see what Eddie's base is all about, but I guess he couldn't see the extra golds in the back here, only the stone. And a TC now coming up from Eddie on the main gold and barracks to get a few eagle scouts out, I guess, and try to get the relics in. Rubenstock, let's see. Resources looking really good for him. Is he going for a fast imp? Don't really know if that would be would make a lot of sense. Wheelbarrow coming from Eddie. And uh, yeah, otherwise we have a siege workshop and monastery coming up forward. No extra TCs at this point, actually. I'm wrong. One TC coming up on the wood line here. And I guess he could go for three TCs soon. Maybe one on the main gold as well, or on that second gold, somewhere like that. Eddie's still a lot of 
gold in the bank. Wheelbarrow soon to be finished and he's going out with monks now to maybe try and grab the first relics. Actually, Monastery and there's the Manganal up for Rubenstock here. And Eddie is doing Eagle Scouts right now. Sanctuary on the way, very important monk upgrade. And Rubenstock is going with only the second TC at this point. Lich is still forward and the Manganal hitting the watchtower. So Eddie needs to repair actually this market starting to burn as well, going down, but not too fast. And Rubenstock getting attacked by the watchtower is still annoying. Eddie in the meantime trying to get the relic in is gonna be able to do so probably. Town center coming up on the main goal as expected. And Eddie not going for a siege workshop, instead a third barracks coming up. Eagle Warrior on the way, so Eddie seems to want to take this in Castle Age. Rubenstock is low on gold, so there's a lot of food in the bank actually, but needed to abandon the this TC for for just a few seconds as long as the monks were converting. Now Eddie is moving in from behind while Rubenstock getting rid of the market and those mangonels should go down as well as the monks. Sorry, I had to sneeze there. And those Manganels maybe can get another shot in a few more towers coming up. But Eddie I think with the ram maybe uh, and Eagle Warriors inside should be able to get rid of these towers. Now Eddie also enough stone for a castle which he could put in between the main gold and the main stone. I think that would be a good idea. Rubenstock, are you going to build anything? Let me check. A uh, university coming up right now and for now Eddie in a very decent position. Villager numbers favoring Rubenstock just a little bit but a castle coming up as expected between the main gold and main stone. So Eddie should be safe on the left hand side. Still collecting relics. He's got one in already and getting a second one right now. And does he have another TC? Actually TC coming up on the wood line here in back so three TC's soon and I guess he should get another lumber camp here Ruben stocks so much wood in the bank oh my god finally a few farms coming up and the Tewtons those farms are cheaper so he doesn't really lose a lot of wood and this tower is gonna go down those villagers getting dropped out of the tower Ruben stock did not pay attention here he's gonna lose at least two of them and this tower is soon to be doomed. The villagers should go out right now. I don't think Eddie needs the villagers inside the castle. Did he forget about them? That's 13 idle villagers in total and the Eagle Warrior is not doing anything right now. A watchtower coming up in a defensive position. Actually double watchtower as far as I can see. And a few Eagle Warriors now going around to try and find the rest of the relics. Eddie cannot see them yet. He can see this one and he's soon to find the last one as well I think. So for now Eddie looking to be in a very comfortable position, uh, let's go faster. Don't think anything really important is going to happen too soon. Eddie of course far away from Imperial Age, Rubenstock as well, going with more farms, more uh, games, and he's still on stone, so possibly a castle coming up soon, maybe between the main gold here and outside to cover the second stone. Village is now going back and these towers are actually going down because the Eagle War is taking care of those. And we are going to see a fight in Imperial Age, but that villager not going down up Hopefully, no, that's only a single wolf. And Eddie is getting all the relics in. He's getting relic number four and I guess number five as well. So he should have the advantage in this game. Ruben starts now the first to click up to Imperial Age. And Eddie not so far behind. He should be able to click up within seconds. Ruben Stock, like. That's what is that? That's 45 seconds behind uh, is Eddie behind Rubenstock. And Rubenstock now going with a few more houses. What is he planning to do here? Not sure, but can you do? We're going to see standard infantry. Arch range is coming. Uh, hand cannon, yes, maybe a good idea against the elite eagle warriors. Can we go slingers? Can we see elite skirmishes maybe as well? And what is Eddie's plan? Yes, each workshop coming up forward. He has that one castle to potentially get trebuchets and he's got a few single eagle warriors inside those barracks. This game, the armor coming in. I guess he needs a few more farms, actually a few more villagers because Rubenstock is right now 15 villagers ahead. And with the university up and the castle up to protect the main goal, he's gonna go for the gunpowder units and I'm not sure how good they are, but it shouldn't be too easy to stop gunpowder, you, gunpowder units. Guard tower actually done by Rubenstock, didn't even see that. Better Archer Armor, Chemistry coming in, handcart also on the way. Eddie now going with the Monk on the right hand side, not sure what he's doing here. I guess converted a villager that was about to build an outpost. First Trubishi coming out to hit, I guess the siege workshop or the barracks possibly. And Eddie also advancing to Imperial Age with handcart coming in. Rubenstock is waiting for the Chemistry to finish. Eddie doesn't have the resources to click Elite Eagle Warrior yet, instead doing Boatkin Arrow for the castle, for towers, I don't know. Because Rubenstock's towers are gone. I'm not sure what the boat canal is for. Maybe Eddie's planning to do slingers here. Actually, slinger production is starting. He's expecting standard C, uh, standard infantry. That's possible. Doesn't really know and he cannot see inside Rubenstock's base. He knows almost nothing actually. Didn't scout that wasn't able to scout because the cast is there. 
and Trebuchets and Hand Cannon is now moving out. And he's going in with the Eagle Warriors to find out about the Archer Rangers. So right now he knows there is Hand Cannon on the field. And Crossbowman uh, coming in instead of the Slingers now. He needs something to counter those. And I guess Arbalest should be a good choice here. If Rubensuk is allowed to go Paladins, then Eddie may be in problems actually. But let's see. Eddie. A little bit short in villagers, but uh, looking decent right now. Rubens took no moving out, and Eddie somehow wasn't fast enough to like do um, the push here or try to attack. Eddie's Grimshire Illumination Arbalest on the way now. And he's gonna go with Monks and Arbalest, but he needs a few Archer Rangers in the back here. I think like, around the university would be good, around the TC and university here. The Trebuchet is moving back. Those hand cannoneers, hand cannoneers right now controlling the, the middle of the map. Only a few houses here, but that's not a full word. Archer Rangers coming out outside. Elite Skirmishers on the way. Arbalest a few in there, but Eddie's not fighting. He's just waiting with the units uh, on the side here. I don't like those uh, uh, those buildings on the outside. I think he should have put them behind. And suddenly, Ruben stock is in a comfortable position in the score lead with bombard cannons, with hand cannons, with trebuchets, villagers moving forward to repair and Eddie lost the trebuchet already, is repairing this castle, a lot of villagers finally moving into elite skirmishes and arbalest but Ruben stock with so many hand cannons should be able to, to push those back, he's got 20 more military units and he's about to take down the castle because Eddie is out of stone and out of everything pretty much, where's the military units from Eddie, is still producing from those archer ranges but this is not really coordinated, the castle went down the trebuchets and then the tower maybe next and bomber cannon taking out a trebuchet now but this this tc is in danger good thing for eddie's he's got all the golds in the back but his economy is not really stable right now or his military production chemistry on the way but eddie did not expect to see so many hand carriers i guess and rubenstock really with the surprising momentum is able to take full map control getting rid of very important buildings from eddie here and chain burning are now on the way to probably get Cavalier out soon if he can afford it actually. Eddie with a lot of elite skirmishers and uh, Arbalest here should take the fight but the problem is there's bombard cannons around and Eddie is not around with elite eagle warriors to take down those bombard cannons so he needs to um, uh, shoot and hide actually or do the guerrilla tactic to call it like that I think it's called like that and bombard cannons and hand cannoneers are still decent at this point few scout have actually come in and we're surprised to see that and now Rubenstock is taking bad fights because Eddie suddenly with a lot more military units and Rubenstock throwing his uh, advantage away is not going for Cavalier I'm sad because he's got a lot of gold in the bank why are you doing scouts here there's no monks on the field and Cavalier would be really strong fortune coming in they're still producing only the scouts I guess he wants to save the gold for uh, bomber cannons and cannoneers I don't know but imag imagine like 10 Cavalier moving into those arborists and lead skirmishes it would be almost GG for Eddie's uh, army like this, 50 military units in the game is still open. Rubenstock lost the momentum again. Eddie able to fight back for now. A few outposts here for Rubenstock. Nothing really important, but the castle coming up forward. And this is huge. Eddie does not have... Does he have a castle? He doesn't have a single castle. And he had a stone at home, but he couldn't take the main stone. Pretty much untouched. A stable economy coming up in the back here with a lot of villages on gold. But that mining camp is terrible. The relics being uh, brought to a secure location in the back because Rubenstock is now pushing into Eddie's main base. Eddie's still fighting in the middle with Arbalest and lead skirmishers. But again, only scouts. What is this? Is Rubenstock trolling? I don't know what he's doing. He doesn't really need scouts. He should go for a cavalier. On on the way for him. That's a good idea, I guess. Uh, Actually scouts moving around, more outposts coming up. And in the middle those trebuchets taking out a lot of buildings, two relics here standing around. I guess Rubens could try and take them and he's going for Eddie's main stone. Right now Eddie's main base is getting raided pretty hard. Not sure what Eddie's been doing in this game, but uh, he was able to fight back and then suddenly not. The armor is standing around doing nothing and inside his own base he's pretty much helpless. What is going to happen here? Eddie needed, I guess he needed Eagle Warriors as well and he should have been able to afford them but like this you can see a lot of resources for Eddie but he's not using them. He's got so much wood in the bank but he doesn't have the production he needs. He's now going for pikemen which is more of a desperation move because there's so many hand cannoneers. I think Arborist and Elite Eagle Warriors maybe uh, Onager added or even Sea Tramps could be helpful. Eddie now going with the Arbalest in the middle, but to what end? There is nothing to fight really for in the middle. The most important thing is that Rubenstock is inside Eddie's base and is still being annoying. Uh, Eddie got that, uh, those gold safe in the back, this is still open and uh, Rubenstock could actually move in. He's using scouts and hand cannons plus the onagers. Very important to see those onagers. Now the forward castle, Rubenstock, 128 villagers and Eddie uh, under 100 right now. Population wise, pretty neck and neck. Eddie got a lot of military units. He's moving in with ramps finally, but it's only battering ramps. Even 
Eddie not even clicking the cap from upgrade. He is moving into the middle to get rid of those stables. The skirmish has an arbor still alive as one of pikemen. But what are you going to do against those castles inside your own base? Now, Rubenstock is starting to collect the relics. What an amazing first game, actually. Arbalest going forward, but what a big Onager shot on those Arbalest. A lot of them going down, and there's more Bowman Cannons and Onagers. Another good shot, and Eddie saying, fuck GG. I'm not sure if that F was intentionally uh, typed, but Rubenstock even going to find the base in the back here. And Eddie losing the first game, which looked like a winning game for a long time. Rubenstock somehow was able to fight this back and then go into Eddie's base. Eddie expected... Standard infantry maybe, went for slingers and switched later on, but no elite eagle warriors, so not enough. And Rubenstock, very impressive to see that a pretty much non-arena player can beat our king Eddie in the game one. Let's go to game two. And now we have Byzantines and Italians against Mayans and Turks. Game two is actually going to be Mayans against Italians. Rubenstock with Mayans. Rubenstock can see this boar, but they need to go in early because Eddie is saying, Hello boar, time to go home, come to daddy. And Rubenstock has not paid attention, he cannot see this. He can actually see the boar run. Right now he could see, but he's concentrating on Eddie's space. And I think he's not going to find any boars outside. That means Eddie is going to steal one boar from Rubenstock here already. And with the Mayans you can compensate for that, of course. But still, minus one boar is always ugly to play. Now let's see what's going to happen in this game other than the boar steal. I guess I can go faster right now. I hope I don't miss anything else because I just started the game and said, okay, I need to show the boar steal here. We have the main gold for Rubenstock. Pretty safe on the side in the back. Main stone safe in the back. Four deer inside, which is nice. Extra gold here actually in Rubenstock. Maybe able to find it with the sheep, but no, he's sending it back. Too bad. Should have sent it uh, to the front here. Second stone outside and second and third gold on the right hand side outside but he could wall those in if he wanted to on relic actually here as well extra berries doesn't really matter this relic closer to Rubenstock but almost in a neutral zone another relic here on the right hand side extra stone this relic a little bit closer to Eddie and then there's one more relic here close to Eddie's third gold as well as the second stone and also the second gold forward in a pretty awkward position so not the best map here for Eddie right now but then again, there's the main gold safe in the back. On the edge of the map, not too nice. And the main stone safe in the back as well. Eddie should be fine. And having a third boar should help Eddie out a lot. Here he's going in the second, or is it a third boar right now? I don't know. Where's the other boar? I guess it's boar number three. Seven minutes into the game, it should be a third boar. And Eddie also got deer inside, and he's got an extra gold inside, which he scouted, actually. Good for Eddie. So right now, Eddie in a very interesting position. I'm not sure if Italians should be better than Mayans. I feel Mayans should have the edge, but Eddie could actually do it with that early um, age advantage. Early Dark Age advantage with a plus one boar. He's going up to Fuel Age on 26 population. Rubenstock is on 26 as well. He's done Loom at the start, yes. And he is going to click up on 28, 29 actually. So he's going with a lot of liches, three liches on gold, three liches on stone, and six farms to compensate for that lost boar. And a deer, oh, that's bad luck. Going back by the villager, attacking this deer one time. That's what we expect to see from a strong player, from an experienced player. And it doesn't matter if it's Arabia or Ravina. This is working. Rubenstock also on the way feudal age. Eddie is there and he's going with the market blacksmith as expected. Nice to see a little bit of a building wall here. We have three villages on gold right now, five villages on stones, so we are, might see a forward castle even. And Eddie now scouting with a scout, of course, on low HP. Uh, Rubenstock will recognize this and say, okay, yes, he definitely stole my boar. Maybe even saw it in the last glance, but he was probably, like, if he saw it, then he knew it, this is not going to happen, I cannot get my boar back. Mark and Blacksmith coming up for Rubenstock as well, but it's a little bit low on food actually. Look at this, 785 and still needs to wait, now clicking up to Castle Age, but 1644 is not too early Castle Age, only now is luring in the last year, actually the third year, and he's got one more. Five villages on stone, he should be able to get a castle up, maybe even go with the fast Imperial Age, but that's not enough villages on gold for that. And Eddie possibly pre uh, preparing a forward castle or at least an inside forward castle and I guess a monastery or double monastery coming up that's one monastery right now doesn't have enough wood for a second monastery because he's only with one lumber camp and that's seven eight villagers on lumber plus four actually all right but it's not too many and he's waiting for that castle to come up 
Uh, for now, Rubenstock still waiting for Castle Age. Let me go a little bit faster again. He will have enough stone for a castle, I think, once he hits Castle Age. And he's getting that last deer in before he's going out with the Eagle Warrior. So food for Rubenstock actually looking pretty decent right now. Should be able to afford whatever he wants to get. And Castle Age is there. 650 stone in the back. Exactly. Castle coming up in front of the main TC and the uh, main gold. Makes sense to have it there on the right hand side. He also put up a little bit of a building ward. Eddie not going with the castle. Castle yet. A little bit of scout fight in the middle, but Eddie is starting to get the relics in instead. First relic on the way, or the second monk not coming out. Looks like Eddie is going for a fast Imperial Age. Maybe he's doing wheelbarrow, but he's staying on one TC. A lot of villagers on the main gold now. And the siege workshop is up. Is he going to sell stone? Buy food? I don't know what's happening. Actually. Eagle Warrior went down and the scout is getting healed now. I guess the monk helped a little bit there. And now Village is moving forward to get that forward castle up. But then Eddie is going to up to Imperial Age soon. He's bought a little bit of food already. And he is going for a 1TC push right now. With enough stone for a second castle to come in almost. A few plumed archers on the field. Can they stop that castle from going up? Ooh, this is going to be devastating. The plumed archers moving out. Eddie, what are you doing? You're going to lose the villagers. They don't even have loom and you cannot get loom in. There is one mangonel on a monk, but those villagers just may even die. That's two villages down. Actually, almost three. Rubenstock needed another hit. And I think Rubenstock will add Blue Prune Dutchess immediately. Maybe even his own Manganel. Doesn't have a siege workshop up yet. And that Manganel is going to be annoying. But the Plumed Archers are fast. They can out micro the Manganel, actually. Let's see if Rubenstock is going to try and do that. Eddie now going with the Barracks and Monastery. We are going to see Conotero here from Eddie, most likely. And I'm not sure how good they are against the Plumed Archers. Plumed Archers moving in again, but dodging the shot. Nice on Manganel. That means Eddie's buying a little bit more time to build up the castle. Plume Arch is now going around. I like the scorpion idea from Eddie to push these plume arches away and a few monks to start and convert here. Village almost done, Sanctity on the way and more villagers now coming forward to finish that castle but Eddie only 32 villagers. It's almost nothing because he lost, uh, lost like two or three and he's really early up to Imperial Age. Not sure if that's a good idea. Now Ruben's still going with Boat Canaro and I'm assuming to see the first traps out from Eddie while Eddie's still trying to chase away those plume arches, try to take them down. Two actually got converted. Eddie, a decent amount of resources for now is doesn't have enough and finally enough for a trebuchet and he's gonna start and attack this TC very soon. Generous crossbowmen out and a few conodieros in that barracks. Block printing on the way for the monks makes sense but Rubenstock found the extra gold is going there right now and Rubenstock probably preparing to fight a full castle age battle. He has enough stone for another castle maybe should put it somewhere in the back and is actually preparing eagle scouts and possibly eagle warriors as soon as he can afford it. Right now Rubenstock's resource is really low. 69 against 36 villagers and the plumed archer plus two of course is starting to repair that castle and is going with the pet art out to is that going to be a counter attack on Eddie's space but Eddie is pretty much fully walled or almost at least not a lot missing and this means parrots Pet arts plus plume arches may be dangerous. Now this castle is getting repaired by uh, like a dozen villagers. No, it's ten villagers spending a lot of stone there. A siege workshop and a fourth barrack coming up here to prepare more eagle scouts. And that monk is going to be annoying on the wood line. I like this play from Eddie. Eddie got three relics against one from Rubenstock. Rubenstock taking the golden back. It's moving loud around with the plume arches, but Eddie can see this. Can he see the pet arts actually? I think he can, yes. And Eddie knows, okay, there's going to be pet arts around, so I'm going to continue my walling. Eagle Warrior upgrade on the way. But this castle is about to go down here. Not looking good for Rubenstock right now. Eddie with a nice push here. A lot of content here on the field actually. And resources still looking okay. -ish. The Manganauts trying to hit the Plum uh, to find the Plum Archers. Possibly one conversion, two conversions maybe. Uh, that's one for one monk. And the Manganauts should take care of the rest. Yes, this Manganauts is going to take care of the Plum Archer as well. On the front, in the meantime, Rubenstock Losing the castle, Trebuchet is moving in, Condottier is moving in, Rubenstock does have 18 military units but 34 from 80 and those are Eagle Warriors, Tracking Squires, German Armor coming in, Monastery also coming up and there is the big Eagle Flood but those Condottier should be better than the Eagle Warriors because they definitely have the better stats, they're more like champions and TC is going down. Conotier is against Eagle Warriors. This should go in favor of Eddie. He's also got a scorpion there. Trebuchet is still hitting buildings, whatever they can find. Rubenstock is losing all limited units, and Eddie with a very nice, fast imp push. Castle, Conotier, and Monks going to a far, uh, through a fast second game, and we're going into game three right now. Now Eddie possibly with momentum going to game 3, but Byzantines against Turks could be dangerous. And let's see actually Byzantines for Eddie, Turks for Rubenstock. 
Rubusuk is actually going up to feud late. Gonna hit that before the 10 mil mark, 21 population. I guess no loom then for him. Actually, a stun loom. Want to go loom 21 pop? Yeah, that's all right. Good timing, actually. What's the perfect? Like 940, if I remember correctly. And he's sending five flitches forward to go aggressive here again. He's got a main gold forward. He's got the second gold and main stone safe in the back. As well as the second stone, a little bit of space for him if he would need it. The Third gold outside and left hand side, one really close, second really close. But for now it's going to be a trash, a rush, a I don't know what it's going to be. And he got the second stone safe in the back, extra gold, which he cannot see. He should have sent the, sh the sheep, there was two sheep, actually four sheep around. But he cannot see this extra gold, second gold on the other side, third gold on the other side, both outside. We have the main gold forward and the main stone forward. That means Eddie got one stone safe, but Rubenstock getting up a watchtower. Eddie just in case palisading these corners to not allow any tower hop, but we know the vaults on in, in Feudal Age and Dark in Feudal Age are weak and even the Byzantines bonus it's not gonna take too long. Sorry, I had to sneeze there again. Oh my god. And uh, now Eddie's saying, okay, I'm going to wall this a little bit. Actually this tree is dangerous. I think he should like tree hop this already, get a palisade over that. And he's walling, Palisade walling a lot here. This was an uh, automatically built wall, I guess. I'm a little bit of a misclick, this villager trying to finish that wall. Another villager is outside. We have Eddie up to few villages wall, going with Loom now. And he's two more villages at this point. And going with the defensive watchtower to make sure that Rubenstone cannot get easy access on that stone. And cannot go in like that. Market coming up here as well, I like this. These Palisade walls actually not finished and Rubenstock can just go in. Eddie, what are you doing? You're allowing Rubenstock to go in with the scout. The village chest now is walling his own village chest, but the uh, tower will go up and the scout from Rubenstock in as well. This is going to be a crazy game already and that's what a lot of non-arena players like to see in arena. Early rush, early action like they used to see in Arabia. And Eddie, how good can you cope with that? Let's see. We have one sheep here still from Eddie. He's got a few idle villages here. Watchtower coming up. Eddie's attacking that tower actually and the villager from Eddie will go down. This is not looking good for Eddie at this point because he's going to lose a second villager here. 28 villagers only suddenly. And while Eddie's starting to attack the watchtower that is outside, Rubenstock actually is starting to attack the house and he's got a second watchtower up here, the number two and three. Eddie now building a defensive watchtower. He is not on stone apparently. Did he use gold to buy? What is happening here? Did he take stone? Did he? Does he have a market? Yes, he has a market. So he bought some stone here. Can you see the second stone in the back? He cannot see. Wow, this is huge. Look at this. He did not scout the back of his base. He cannot see his second stone. This is terrible. Eddie, go for better scouting. What the hell is happening here? And Rubenstock, without Eddie seeing that stone, has such a good momentum here with the tower rush. He's moving forward with three villagers. Now Eddie's saying, nope, this is not going to happen. I'm going to attack everything here. I'm going to lose my villagers. I'm going to use, not lose, use the villagers. And quickly walling here, those Rubenstock actually dropping into the tower through the palisades. Nice to see quick stone walls coming up. And now Eddie attacking this watchtower. Is about to lose a second villager here. No, not happening. One went down, but not a big problem. And Rubenstock probably not so far away from Castle Age with a good amount of villagers. Pretty neck and neck with Eddie, but Rubenstock is, on the aggress uh, is aggressive here. And he has actually less idols than Eddie because 11 idle villages from Eddie. This is not looking good. A lot of wood in the bank. Almost no gold. Now he sold some wood, I think, bought some food. Wants to go up to Castle Age. Rubenstock in the meantime doing fletching. And he is preparing to go up to Castle, going with a mining camp on a second gold now. Getting a market up. And still being annoying with more watchtowers on the way. Now Eddie's uh, attacking this immediately. And the watchtower will go up, but I guess it will go down as well. This was not a good watchtower. I think he should have put a palisade here maybe as well. But Eddie and Rubenstock are going to fight. Villagers getting dropped out. Fight again. Getting dropped inside. Repairing the tower. Rubenstock is microing pretty well. And now Eddie in the danger of losing another villager. Can he save him? Yes. Both players on the way to cast age almost at the same time. But Rubenstock three more villagers. And I think he had less idle time. And that means Rubenstock is ahead a little bit right now. Also he is still on storm with now a lot of villagers. Going for gold. He's gonna go with the forward castle most likely. Imagine a castle drop right here. There's enough space actually on the main stone, the main gold and among the towers. But Eddie will do everything to prevent that uh, castle from coming up. So let's see how Rubenstock is going to continue this. Eddie got a villager outside accidentally I think and there's a few houses around. Both players on the way. Rubenstock actually inside with three more villagers. I guess the, those are these from towers. Going with the stable and that means he actually could go for a fort castle maybe like right here. But it's dangerous. Eddie going up at the barracks and he is going to put on a few spearmen because he could see the stable. 
Now, outpost again the, against the Watchtower coming up, and Eddie is up to Castle Age Monastery on the way. Not sure if that's the right decision. Maybe Siege Workshop would be better. Actually, Stable coming up as well. And Rubenstock sending villagers forward, buying 100 stone. Eddie could see those villagers theoretically, I guess, and don't know if he really spotted them. And the castle is coming up here. Can Eddie see the castle coming up? He can, he can see that. So good for Eddie. He knows he's going to prepare for that. And out of that stable, a few knights coming in as well as a siege workshop up for Rubenstock here. Eddie, a lot of villagers on main gold right now. Probably preparing for the knights with a few monks. And Rubenstock not going for any mangonel yet. Doesn't have to boot for that. The watchtower is helping Eddie a little, but Eddie still with seven idle villagers. And this is huge. What's happening here? Goes on the way for Rubenstock, Castle is up, Janissary is on the way, and now Rubenstock has a pretty easy attack going on because the Janissaries are going to be really strong and he's got a siege workshop inside Eddie's Bay with the Mangonel on the way, starting to attack the gate to get the villagers out again and maybe the knights to be able to maneuver at home. No extra TCs coming up, the second stone almost mined out. And where's that main stone? Was that a main stone? No, I don't know, this was main stone, the second stone is still second stone is still there. My god, that's a sentence. Chinese tree production is still going. Let's see what Eddie is preparing here right now. He is going with double monastery, a few monks here, a lot of villages on gold, a lot of wooden bank, but no extra TCs, as far as I can see at least. He still cannot see the extra or the second gold. This is terrible. He can see, uh, stone, sorry. He can see the gold, but he cannot see the stone. And Eddie, I guess he found out later on that there is a stone. I think this game could have gone differently up to this point if he knew about the stone like this. Eddie's taking the main stone right now, and Rubenstock is sending out Janistris. He's not getting in at this point. He should have attack the, the gate with the uh, uh, Janissaries. Look at this, two mangonels also helping out and this gate is going to fall really fast. The watchtower probably next three mangonels actually. Eddie doing redemption. Makes sense but he needs to pay attention with the monks here because Janissaries on the field means this could get ugly. Three knights actually out from Eddie. I'm not sure what he's doing with them so far away. Why are those knights on the left hand side doing nothing here? Extra stone actually on the map. I didn't see it. Doesn't really matter for now. And the mangonels now starting to attack the watchtowers. There's the monks moving in. And those monks are going to be able to convert one mangonel already going down fast. And possibly a second mangonel actually going down the watchtower. Rubenstock just in case deleting the third. Going out now with the Janissaries and knights. And. Uh, not going to push so hard on the left hand side any longer, I guess. Eddie bought a little bit of time. Also, he's not far away from clicking up to Imperial Age, remember Byzantines? And Rubenstock, nowhere close. Not producing any more Janissaries. Going with the second TC now on the wood line, where the main stone was. Going for the second stone as well. Could go for 30 C actually if he wanted to, and TC 3 and 4. Needs a few more farms then. But I guess he expects Eddie to go up soon. And there is the Imperial Age click actually. Rubenstock is going to find two idle villagers, and Eddie's saying, Yeah, those are going to die anyway, so I'm going to suicide them before they're getting killed. Why not? It's alright. Eddie waiting for Imperial Age, but Rubenstock still with a lot of Janissaries on the field and resources looking decent for him, but he needs a little bit of time. Wheelbar on the way, he cannot click up to Imperial Age too fast and I guess he should get a little bit more economy behind that. Now Eddie with the monks will go for 12 range, castle coming up, he's gonna protect his main goal, which is good for him. On the left hand side, it won't be easy to get map control, but he's starting to convert buildings. Going to convert the watchtower next, and Rubenstock already stopped the siege workshop from getting converted. Now destroying that, uh, that watchtower as well. And Eddie suddenly retaking map control. Interesting to see. Almost up to Imperial Age. Rubenstock now clicking up on 64 against 50 villagers. So for Eddie, the villager numbers are actually pretty decent. Rubenstock, of course, a few more. And with a good amount of farms, actually, so he can produce more Janistries or possibly Hassan later on because Eddie may go for monks. We'll borrow on the way from Eddie and I'm assuming block printing, yes, illumination may come in very soon. Also trebuchet on the way. But what can you do against monks? Well, hussars maybe not the worst option. Spearmen should get upgraded to pikemen very soon as well because you may need them, Eddie. You're going to face Hussars potentially and this Janissary is moving in again to try and snipe a monk. Actually successful, but now of course Eddie sending monks to try and convert Janissary here in the 12th range against only 8. Will be uh, will enable Eddie to do that. First trebuchet hitting the castle, Eddie's going for the second trap immediately, got the monks and a spearman behind. What is Rubenstock going to do? Uh, what is the plan here? He's going with a few stables inside his base, light cap on the way and of course free Hussar upgrade coming in soon. Rubenstock also enough stone for a cast of his own. 
Nice outpost rushed on the left hand side, getting a lot of uh, vision on the map. And Eddie uh, converting a knight here and starting to take down a monk. A lot of Hussars now dropping out to attack these monks. Actually, Eddie knows he needs to go back. And Rubenstock not far away from Eddie's military numbers. Actually, pretty neck and neck now, 21. Rubenstock repairing that castle, but I don't think he's going to be able to do so. I think the castle will go down. Rubenstock still with a few Janissaries, the Hussars, and he can go for hand cannons, of course, if he wants to. Scale burning on the way, scale mail armor for Eddie. I'm expecting to see the pikemen up really, really soon. Theocracy coming in first, and Rubenstock repaired the castle a little bit, but could go for an, an, another castle very soon. Oh my god, Rubenstock did not find those two sheep. What is going on here? Eddie possibly can still not now find it. No, he cannot see his stone. This is terrible. Rubenstock missed two sheep. This is not the level I expected in, in Dark and Feudal Age. Like, the players neglecting the Dark Age. I don't know what's happening here. Of course, Eddie got rid of the buildings, got rid of the castle. Now moving out to Trebuchets, has Pikeman upgrade. Heresy coming in for Rubenstock. This is a very, very interesting upgrade. And I think Eddie should not continue to go for monks because he could see all the Hussars. Now, of course, he's starting to attack that siege workshop. Bomber can dropping out to get a good shot on the in Trebuchets, but those are still standing. Can Rubenstock actually move in? I don't think so. There's too many pikemen around the traps. Maybe he can snipe one or two, and actually he is moving in here. Hussars first. Heresy is done, let's not forget that. But so many pikemen there. And the Tunisians are going to go and help to attack the pikemen, and Rubenstock is not going to lose them to Eddie. He's uh, losing them to, uh, to the death here. And uh, Hussar is now moving on a trebuchet. So nice sniping. Eddie trying to convert, but this is a decent fight here for Rubenstock, unless he's um, losing too many Hussars. Good job here moving back. And Eddie can't really do a lot against this, these Tunisians right now, because the Hussars are out of range. And the conversions will only kill those Janissaries. Hassar is moving in again to get rid of the gold units from Eddie. Eddie low on resources, Rubenstock has a castle in the bank, still producing a lot of Hussars actually. He cannot go for any extra Janissaries, he doesn't have a castle, but he's going for Archer Ranges now in the hand cannon production, starting as expected. Horse color coming in from Eddie, yeah, only 41 minutes into the game. Good timing actually, better than never. He's going with the extra gold, but he can still not see that extra stone and this is terrible. I want to know if Eddie could see it in the end of the game. I hope I'm going to find out. Maybe he's going to get Town Watch. Wait, Byzantines don't they get Town Watch for free? Something like that? Or Town Patrol? Uh, I think Town Watch for free. Archer Rangers are coming up from Eddie as well. Does he have a university? No, I'm assuming we're going to see Elite Skirmishers and Pikeman Halberdier should be good in late game against Turks. Actually, this game is going 42 minutes already. Let's speed up a little bit and see what's happening. The monks moving forward to try and convert a few more hand cannons. Actually, Eddie is successful here. The Hussar is moving around and catching the monks off guard. Eddie's going to lose a lot of those monks here. Very good snipe here from Rubenstock. Eddie now 20 more military units, and suddenly Rubenstock needs more. Doesn't have the economy to get a lot of Hussars out or hand cannons. They all cost food, obviously. And those archers are actually going down. Eddie with the momentum now. Good score, dude. Villager numbers, he's still a little bit behind, but it's not a big problem. Rubenstock had four relics, now they're all getting dropped out of those monasteries. And more Hussars coming in. Eddie doing Bracer, Eddie going for actually Arbalest here. Interesting choice. Now Rubenstock probably needs Bombard Cannons as well. And uh, another problem is you have the 12 monks, 12 range monks against you. Eddie could actually take this game now. It looked like Rubenstock was able to do it. But Eddie is in a very decent position. Pellet Archer Arm on the way, not Arbalest yet. Rubenstock, what are you going to do? Queuing up a lot of hand cannons in one archer range. He should really fix that. That's our armor plate barding armor, so he's getting more upgrades on all his military units and he's going with more stables at home. Taking that forward gold here. Also trying to take control of the left hand side gold, the third gold with the town center. That's a good idea. I think he should get a castle here as well because this, this gold is going to be attacked by Eddie very soon. Provided he can see the TC coming up, he's going to convert that um, archer range. Of course, it's going to go down. Arbalest and Ballistics now on the way from Eddie. And Rubenstock is suddenly pushed uh, very far back to his base, but Hassar is moving out, Eddie could not see this in time, he's gonna lose the monks, he's gonna lose the crossbowmen here. He is uh, then sending pikemen to defend, which is a good idea, and Rubenstock is happily gonna give up a few Hussars to kill the monks, I guess. Arbalest and Ballistics about to get finished, Arbalest coming in very soon, there we go, and a few villagers actually going down on that gold mine, so Eddie is possibly pressuring, putting pressure on that he see here what is Rubenstock preparing to do I really don't know he's getting a lot of hand carriers at home and he's waiting for the right time to attack I think he needs to add siege that's very important in my opinion to add maybe cap ram siege ram or possibly bombard cannons I guess rams would be even better here now Eddie getting a forward trebuchet attacking I think he should attack the siege workshop that's not in the, is that in the minimal range 
gets the siege wave first, the market going down. And now 59 against 53 military units, but Rubenstock moving out to get rid of the monks first. Pikeman going to attack here. Eddie needs help, the leader upgrade in my opinion. And now there is hand cannoneers against Arbalest, but the Arbalest are only shooting at the Hassaras for now. So the hand cannoneers are getting free hits on those pikemen. And the trebuchets may go down fast. But Eddie still got a lot of Arbalest missing chemistry. Captain run away from Eddie. This is a really good game at this point. And could go either way. I like these games where you don't know who is the winner. Like in minute 51 and it's going in like 1 hour 15. And you're just waiting for the GG. Like this, Ruinstock suddenly fighting back here. Eddie with the Arbalest now in the middle of the map. But he's lost a lot of pike, man. Can he... Uh, Get enough of them back here. How many barracks do we have? Like one, two, three is producing, but not non stop. And I think he needs like uh, two, three more barracks. Doesn't have a lot of wood actually. More woodlands coming up here. Uh, two wolves killing a villager. Ooh, this villager is going down. Sad, sad to see that. T9 Divu. And Arbalest now fighting against Sassars. Nice micro from, from Eddie. But the trebuchet probably going down. Leather Archer coming in to get more upgrades on those. But Henkeniers and Hassar suddenly in the middle of the map trying to take map control again and Rubenstock sending his own cap rams against Eddie's. Chemistry and another archer armor to be finished. Chemistry coming in. Of course it's gonna take a while. Eddie is gonna on the left hand side to take extra gold. It's a good idea. And one monk standing around to get some line of sight. There's the castle actually to also cover this extra stone. Rubenstock right now. Decent resources. Blast burn is on the way. And he's going with Henkeniers and Hassars against Arbalest and Pikeman for now. I want to see Halberdiers here. You need those against the Hassars in my opinion. And and possibly see trams for either player to be able to uh, get a little bit more uh, arrow fire taken or even hand cannon fire taken. And we have Sea Tram up here for Rubenstock first. He had a lot of food in the bank. Eddie still waiting for the food to come in. Needs to invest more, but he doesn't have a lot of military uh, buildings to produce. And that's a big problem. He doesn't have the wood to produce. He's going with more archer rangers on the left hand side. Also, Blacksmith coming up. But I think he should have gone with the archer rangers inside his base, around the monastery maybe. Now, Rubenstock is retaking map control. Eddie's in the score lead, but Rubenstock 121 villagers. So, pretty much fully boomed. Only 9 isles. Looking good. Sea Workshop coming up forward. He's taking down buildings from Eddie. Bring our charm on the way, but sea tram will be huge. And what is Eddie going to do against sea trams here? I guess his own sea trams, possibly onages, but there is the hussars on the field. Castle coming up on the left hand side, and I think Eddie will not be able to stop this. He's sending the Ar Arbalest to the left hand side, trying to micro against the hand cannoneers. Looking good for now, but there are sea trams now on the field, and the hussars they are there as well to be annoying, and they're going to attack the Arbalest. Eddie is 36 military units, not sure where those are. Possibly inside these archer rangers. And Rubenstock with a very nice push here. Eddie was not able to push. Stop like right here where TC was. And then Rubenstock was given time to push back. That castle is really annoying. And Eddie right now, 139 population. But he's calling GG because he was not able to get enough military units out. And I guess his military units were all scattered over the map. And I'm pretty sure Eddie did never ever find the stone and this is really terrible. Could have changed the game. Maybe it could have won him the game actually if he had that stone. Like this Rubenstock taking the second game and we're going into a match game for Rubenstock. Once again, I need to start early. We have a Vikings war in game for both players picking Vikings here. Rubenstock has three there inside, extra gold, third gold, and a second stone, but he can only see the second stone right now. He's sending villagers forward. He's not going to lose this one, and just in case, palisading over the dead wolf. And he is going to be aggressive once again. Eddie also up to fuel age, but five more villagers actually, and probably no loom here. We have Rubenstock with two villagers on the main stone, which is almost trapped into that forest but not really main gold also pretty safe here the second gold outside forward and wait do i see a third gold actually no that's the second gold and third gold is outside forward okay let's uh, make sure about that eddie got the second stone forward and the main stone forward this one is outside that means this watchtower is going to be really good i'm pretty sure rubenstock saw the two stones and eddie is going with the barracks but rubenstock with the momentum again trying to uh, make uh, to stop eddie from taking any stone and he got a 200 stone that he was awarded at the start, of course. Main gold for him, safe in the back. Second and third gold, safe in the back as well. And he can see those, which is good for him. Extra gold, which he can see as well. But this time he scouted. 
but he has no extra stone in the back here and market coming up he can only go with the watchtower but one and then he needs to buy stone yet again sending villages out right now i think he should be able to click up to castle in a reasonable amount uh, reasonable time going with the blacksmith going with the market behind a few more stone walls coming up and rubenstock saying okay let's try this again was successful last time in the end so why not go for the early age aggression and outpost coming up this could have been a watchtower actually eddie's not going for a watchtower right now he could go for that he's in feudal age but it's not happening instead he's clicking up to castle age it's going to be there at 1531 and there's the watchtower coming up from rubenstock to possibly hit that lumber line and later on support a second watchtower i guess uh, that's number one two possibly three watchtowers yes actually he's removed the outpost now it is saying no this watchtower i cannot allow this or they saying stone walls might be a good option probably a good idea double bricks on the way eddie though is going to cast late early on this time is not getting deflected by any like watchtowers coming up here and saying okay i got the main gold and the two second and third gold safe in the back why not go for maybe three tc boom siege workshop something like that there's a really close to space a second relic as well one in the neutral zone close to an extra stone which eddie cannot see is gonna find it soon but the question is can you get villages here probably not any other two relics closer to rubenstock but not really too close to the space and now eddie about to reach castle age can go for one extra tc could buy another 100 stone for another extra tc but i guess he's gonna go with the siege workshop and possibly monastery and he's going with the siege workshop forward so he sent villages outside and he could use so those villagers to go for the extra stone as well. Does he have loom? No loom? No, and he got loom. Very important to see. He did that in Feudal Age, I guess. Both are on the way. And I still want to see a second TC. He's going with the Mangonel right now. But counter-attacking is really awesome here at this point. With the Mangonel, the problem is there's a scout, but Spearman also up for Eddie. This is good. He's got a barracks. Uh, we've seen that before. And he's starting to take the walls from Rubenstock. Was clicked up to Castle Age. Also very reasonable time. Pretty good, actually. He did not waste so much time time this game but only went for a few towers here starting to take the stone which makes sense which makes sense oh my god cannot talk anymore but uh, eddie is already pushing gate coming up behind here that's a classic gate but it's not gonna hold for too long or too long only 375 hp and it's gonna go down before castle edge is reaching eddie going with the stable now as well night production starting and he's going with two mangonels night scout possibly a spearman and rubenstock needs to put down defensive watchtowers one is up already a second one not going up and it's gonna go down actually so rubenstock suddenly in trouble because his push was failing this time eddie able to defend and now three mangonels actually to start and attack that barracks next rubenstock is in trouble here eddie with a really nice push but can coming from rubenstock on those towers but he is going for stables only now first two knights are there a monastery coming up as well rubenstock could, rubenstock could go for another tower here but no extra tc at this point rubenstock is in trouble and eddie with a really nice push that's what he's good at pushing in castle age early castle age nice conversion here he may lose a mangonel or two but Rubenstock has to go away unless he wants to lose all the knights. They also are on low HP already. Villager is starting to repair the Mangonel and actually Eddie is not losing. He's lost one of them right now, but no, uh, three Mangonels still up. Again, a monk coming out to be able to convert a knight. Not happening. Eddie got four, five knights right now. And the TC is under heavy attack. Rubenstock almost enough stone for a castle, but he's got only two villagers plus the four on stone. So it was too slow. And even then, where do you put that castle? I don't know where you can go safely here. Rubenstock almost no wood and he's using all the wood to repair the TC now he's buying wood actually this is terrible look at this he sold stone he's buying wood but this is not looking good for him I feel Eddie's about to take this game it's gonna be a short one apparently unless Rubenstock can magically come back he's moving on the knights again but he doesn't even have resources to go with more knights actually some I guess team game maybe it's uh, is that the RTS, RTS League? Possibly coming up. Doesn't really matter for me right now. And Eddie going with the forward siege workshop. Now I still got two mangonels. He's got a good amount of knights. Horse call on the way. This push is completely stopped. Nothing happening. Eddie now taking care of his economy and still pushing that one TC that Rubenstock has. He has got only one lumber camp. This is terrible. And Rubenstock 41 villagers, but only that one TC and only in defensive mode. Now Eddie's moving in with those knights actually to take down the enemy nice the monks a few villages possibly and he needs another oh and now rubens of buying stone he needs another mangonel here is coming there right now and one more on the way 80 sold would 
Bought stone, not sure what he's planning to do. Maybe a TC, see Trojan coming from Rubenstock here. But again, this TC is under heavy attack and Rubenstock has to use villagers to repair it once again. And on the right hand side, no, nothing happening. It's blinking, but that's only because of the watch shows. And Rubenstock actually calling GG here. What a strong counter push by Eddie. I love the strategy. Really nice to see that the watchtower rush here, tower rush in fuel ledge did not work out and Eddie was able to go with Manganels. Let's go into this deciding game five and see if Eddie can and come back after the first game from hell or is it going to be dethroned by Rubenstock actually we're going to find out so here goes the deciding game five let's see how it is going to perform here because in future in former tournaments we've seen Master in a four Eddie was really playing Perfect, really well in Master Arena 4 tournament, but Master Arena 3, I think he went out against Stark. Was that a winner bracket? I don't know. And so we've known Eddie to strike a little bit in tournaments, just like Slam pretty much. And actually in this game, Rubenstock called a read before Eddie couldn't, and Eddie had a really bad map. He didn't even have a real wood line. Like this now, Eddie got a main gold and a main stone safe in the back, second stone safe in the back, the second gold. I think this is open safe in the back. Danger, not sure what that is all about. No, but no trash coming in this time. And only third gold forward, but pretty far forward outside, actually. Or is that third gold from Eddie? I think it is. Let's see, Mark Blacksmith coming up. Rubenstock's map, though, he restarted and his map didn't get better, it rather got worse. Main stone for him safe in the back. Okay, now well, the main gold is forward, the second stone is forward outside, the second gold is forward outside, the third gold is forward outside, and in the back pretty much nothing. So his map, really not good. This wood line really far away, this other wood line really not safe, pretty far away as well. And Eddie, I think, can see all of this map right now, but plays on the way to Castle Age. Rubenstock is three villages on stone, so he plans to get a castle up, I guess. And Eddie can see second gold, third gold, main gold, second stone. And he only doesn't know about the main stone, so he may try and abuse the map here. He is going to wall a little bit and is with five villages on gold plus five villages on stone. We're going to see a castle from Eddie. As well let's speed up a little bit and see what's going to happen in early castle age now eddie it's not going to be up first, so let's uh, see Rubenstock first. What is he planning to do here? He doesn't have enough stone for castle yet. I guess two TCs coming up and he possibly will get a TC on the main gold because gold will be a problem for Rubenstock here. And a TC, I don't really like it because you can only fit a few villages around here, but it's not you're not able to take this gold from the TC side. Now a little bit of a scout fight happening. Rubenstock has to run away. Loom and Boso coming in from Eddie at this point. And Rubenstock going with another TC. Yes, on the small wood line in the main stone. Eddie in the meantime going with the siege workshop inside his own base. Three, four villages forward, both on the way. Not going with any extra TCs for now and he's gonna go with the forward monastery and the castle possibly. Those villages are idle but he's sending them now. Siege and uh, Manganel is uh, coming out and that means Eddie should be able to get that castle up and I think he should put it, yes there's an outpost coming in, on that main gold possibly or between this gold stone and cover the main gold. Castle actually coming up here. Rubenstock can see the outpost and he can see the villager building so he can safely assume that this is a castle and now he knows what's happening. Let's see how he's going to react here. Eddie is starting to collect relics. He was able to take down the scout. The Mangan are uh, protecting the vaults immediately and Rubenstock seems to be in trouble here. He's still taking gold but he cannot really do anything at this point. He is trying to get as many much stone as possible and he is possibly going to put a castle next to the main gold here, 650 AD. Yeah, that is the castle coming up. Eddie will not be in time to go in, but he's got two mangonels, so let's go for the rush here. Again, again Kotok free upgrade coming in, which is not happening. Not sure what that upgrade is. And if you know, tell me, but I'm going to cast a few more games in those next two, two days, so don't be surprised if I ask again. Now uh, Rubenstock and Eddie both have a castle, but Eddie is going for five Huskards already. He's got ten military units and Rubenstock no military units whatsoever. He's just booming a little bit behind his castle now. And Eddie is not giving up on the push. He can see the castle of course, but he's still covering that gold. And I think he should go for Fletching and Boatkin because that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tiles. He might even be able to take the TC or the castle here. Not happening for now. Eddie moving on the left hand side with monks, Meganels, a few Huskals, and Rubenstock still zero. Not going for any military units whatsoever. Eddie has one TC expected, he's investing a lot. And a, another forward castle coming up inside Rubenstock's base. Rubenstock about to lose the market. 
This is not looking good for Rubenstock, he's with a lot of flitches and gold, but he doesn't have any gold really. Uh, he's buying some stone, some wood apparently as well, and now getting his own manga out because the siege workshop finally. Blitzer may go down and another castle coming up, so Rubenstock has enough stone at this point, he bought more stone to get that second castle up. Is it gonna be in time because Eddie 20 military runs against only that Manganel and we have two castles for either player but Rubenstock still not investing into Haskals here and I'm not sure how this is going to end. Eddie right now with a really big advantage, map control, a few relics inside, actually only one, it's really disappointing to see but he's focusing on that push and this castle is really important for Rubenstock because it's gonna make sure those Manganels can do anything. Eddie is going to waste two of those. And right now it seems like the push is stopped. Let's see how Eddie's going to react. He's doing real well at this point. Is he adding extra TCs? He is still mining the main stone, which makes sense. And he's still not going for any extra TCs. 42 villages and 72 for Rubenstock. So Eddie actually needs to go in. He needs to do the damage. This outpost is not gonna go up. And Rubenstock is going with more walls because this TC is now getting attacked. And Eddie is, has opened these walls here, so he actually could move in. Rubenstock still only that one military and 33, but Eddie has 33 idle military units pretty much. That's a lot of resources wasted to do, to do nothing. This is actually open, no, the house coming up here. And I think Eddie should just start and attack the castle. Get rid of the Manganel, now he's actually getting in here because yeah, this is open, I guess he destroyed the house. And now Rubenstock is in trouble. No military units and Eddie has a lot of house guards here. He should be able to get rid of the castle. And I think he definitely should attack this castle, getting it, uh, get it down. Rubenstock finally started with those Haskells, but it's really, really late. How are we going to survive? This is looking terrible. Eddie could go for the wood lines right now. He is moving away with the Haskells. What is he doing? Why is he going away? Just get rid of that castle. It would be so important. The Manganel actually hitting those Haskells. Maybe that's the reason. And a second Manganel on the way. Rubenstock now sending villagers back, quickly walling his wood line. That's like Arabia style here. And Eddie uh, inside Rubenstock space. Rubenstock now finally getting a few Haskells and getting them to work as well. Market coming up here in the back and a few more walls. I guess he could quickly wall this if he needed to. And now Rubenstock sitting on half a peerage going for a minute arms upgrade. He has a barracks somewhere. Where's the barracks from Rubenstock? It's on the right hand side. Another wood line. And look at this, so many militia being queued up. This is huge, but it's gonna take forever. Rubenstock also enough stone for another castle. Where to put it? And Eddie is suddenly not able to really push in. This Manganel did magic pretty much, made sure that his castle is not going down. And Eddie went out of the uh, Huskards, now he's still uh, attacking this wood line, still trying to get through the houses and the lumber camp. But there's the men at arms moving out, long swords one on the way. And Rubenstock coming back from hell apparently is on the score lead actually, with better KD, with a lot more villagers still, 30 villagers difference. Eddie now going around on the left hand side. And actually, Rubenstock may over chop here, this is dangerous. But those Huskards that are going in from Eddie. They're gonna be chased down by Haskells and Long Swordsman. And Rubenstock suddenly has a working economy, except for gold. That's a big problem for him. And Eddie only has those Haskells, but a lot of them. Look at this 34 Haskells. There's so many of them in the. And that castle, a nice attack with the Manganels, taking on two villagers immediately. This TC may fall, so Eddie's push is not gone completely. And Eddie is still trying to go in. He's gonna choose the left hand side apparently because there's so many Haskells right now. A few Haskells here from Rubenstock, but they're not gonna do a lot. This house is about to go down, so Eddie could go in here as well. This house went down, and Rubenstock going out to attack the Manganels. Eddie cannot go out. Yeah, look at this. Uh, Rubenstock trapping Eddie inside his, uh, inside his base. Rubenstock with a really nice move but the Haskells, one got converted, the others died. And Eddie still with more military units. Rubenstock though is getting more and more long swordsmen. And Eddie producing Haskells, long swordsmen for Rubenstock. He still is on gold, he's one village on gold. I guess he's selling a lot of resources, abusing the market. Would make sense, but he's got the economy to do that. Now Eddie on 55 villages, is he finally going for any extra TC? Second TC here, this is good for him. And I think he should start to tech into uh, eco get your upgrades, get a good economy going, because apparently the first push did not uh, go too well, and right now Rubenstock is about to lose a TC here, but then again, he has a working economy, he's got a lot of long swordsmen, and Eddie is not gonna be able to take this game fast here. 
Hoskarts moving on left hand side. Rubenstock has to abandon his woodline completely. Send villages into the castle. Quickly wall this wall with houses and siege workshop. And Eddie now saying, okay, let's attack this castle and let's get rid of that. I guess Rubenstock needs his long swordsman. Oh, they actually ram push on Eddie's castle. This is huge. Long swordsman moving against the Hoskarts. And Eddie's gonna lose a castle, possibly the, the Manganel. At the same time, Rubenstock is repairing a lot of villages. Look at this. This is just crazy. They're all standing next to each other. Each other those 10 villages and repairing that castle forever but Rubenstock has the stone for that right now he's still got the stone in the bank apparently and now he's moving out along swordsman with rams to attack Eddie's base even he's going to see between the gold and stone and Rubenstock not so far behind the military numbers and the long swordsman will be better than those uh, Huskards actually I guess Eddie now doing anarchy because he needs to be able to produce Huskards he is low on resources because he's not going into Imperial Age but into barracks now and Rubenstock suddenly claiming that gold this is so important for Rubenstock big fight happening actually Eddie with the better military units here he's got more numbers Rubenstock losing a lot and Eddie suddenly with a big military advantage but he's not able to get that castle down. Mangenel taking care of the rest here. Eddie actually wasting Haskells here and this TC is under attack immediately. So Eddie 20 more military units. This is going back and forth. What a game actually. Uh, this Goth War is really really entertaining in my opinion and it could still go either way because nobody has a clear advantage. Rubenstock came back from hell. He can do it a second time probably. Eddie low on resources. Rubenstock low on resources. Everybody's investing a lot into... Wow, so many long swords been queued up. Actually from that, uh, from these resources Rubenstock could click up but the you would probably lose the game and Rubenstock is scattering his army here getting the numbers up Eddie moving forward with monks but the long swordsman will be better against monks than the Huskards possibly now the monastery coming up to collect the relics and Eddie on the left hand side also the monastery but those two Manganals are actually attacking farms not too bad another ram push here uh, Rubenstock using the rest of his rams, three rams and the long swordsman to attack this castle. Eddie is about to lose the second forward castle here. That means Rubenstock two against only one. Now Eddie moving in the Haskells and the wall coming in too late, but there is long swordsman to try and defend here. And I think Rubenstock should be able to do that. Eddie moving back, the other long swordsman coming in because Eddie lost another castle, forging on the way. And Rubenstock 72 against 69 villages from Eddie. So Eddie's economy now looking probably a little bit better. Got a relatively good food eco going. 30C here in the back, he's starting to take the second gold here. And in the middle, he's uh, trying to collect relics. A lot of fast girls still. I think Eddie should tag into long swordsman himself. Or maybe try and go to Imperial Age. But to what end? That's really the problem. Because then you need hand carriers, maybe. I think long swords. Uh, switch to long swords is necessary and right now Rubenstock is occupying the left hand side nice manganel shots on those villagers and Rubenstock even trying to go in with wills this is not good to wait for the long swords when monastery is going down this TC may even not, may not go up and we have another big fight with Haskells against wow fully upgraded actually for cast age Haskells against those long swords few monks to help out but Rubenstock I think has more military units here and he's getting rid of those Haskells he is taking a good fight and he's still got a few units but looks like Rubenstock actually got more here he's gonna be able to get the castle at uh, the TC up going with barracks now to get more long swordsmen on this side and he's got a good amount of food in the bank he just needs more gold as a few villages on the main gold and Eddie's sending more Haskells but Rubenstock with the long swordsman is looking good now Eddie apparently has a few more here Rubenstock should go back and what an amazing game look at this villages now coming from Rubenstock everywhere he's still producing so many uh, single long swordsman coming out and still taking his main gold he is still farming here on the left hand side where Eddie attacked so hard and in the middle the fight suddenly seems to go in favor of Rubenstock he's in a score lead actually and the Haskells are not gonna be good for too long Eddie should tag into long swordsman he's not doing that he's uh, still creating Haskells he's still taking the fight that I think favors the Husk uh, the favors the long swords here they are cost effective uh, when you fight Haskells as far as I know at least Rams now starting to attack this barracks. Iron casting on the way, fully upgraded uh, long swords coming in. And Eddie lower on military numbers than Rubenstock. Rubenstock is uh, sending more long swords, now going back just in case. And Eddie low on everything. Look at this, this is amazing. Uh, we have almost no idle villages, same military, uh, same village number 79 actually. And all the players think, oh, this is not good. Mm, bucked out a little bit. Eddie's gonna find that soon. And a little bit of a ceasefire. Now, no more fights happening 
thing at this point. Maybe got that one mangan to be really annoying against the villagers, but it will go down. I guess the villagers will take care of that. In the middle, minor fights. Huskar's being sent forward. That's not intentionally, I guess. Rubenstock, 48 minutes, 49 minutes into the game, getting wheelbarrow. He got so many farms already. Look at this. He's got, what is that? Almost 40 farmers. Now that's Eddie. Let me check Rubenstock. Rubenstock got 46 farmers and only now wheelbarrow is terrible. I think Eddie has done wheelbarrow, did he? Not sure. And now Haskell's moving to maybe attack TC. But this is not good chasing our villagers. And there's the Long Swordsman starting to help out. Eddie needs to go back immediately. He's not getting down on the TC. Finally taking him to Men at Arms. But this is a good fight for Rubenstock. He's killing a few single last cards with that some, uh, bigger army. And he's got one army on the left, one on the right. He could uh, start to attack Eddie from two sides here. Now a big fight happening between the Haskells and the Long Swordsman. Eddie's selling some resources, buying the Long Swordsman upgrade, I guess. Rubenstock low, but he's, uh, he's getting gold from the main gold, which is really important to see. Eddie very low on everything. He's hopefully starting to get men at arms. Yes, he's queuing up a lot of them, but only four, five barracks. Well, it's actually not too bad. Five, six, seven. And another big fight happening with 100 infantry units in the middle here. No siege units yet. I imagine two, three scorpions would be so devastating here, but who has the resources to do that? Eddie actually with three relics inside. The other two still on the field. If you Post coming up again for Rubenstock. Apparently, he's doing that uh, or is preferring to do that uh, at some stage in the game to get more line of sight, to get more vision in. And another quick ceasefire, but 68 military units from Rubenstock. Town which now coming in from him. He is sending long swordsmen to protect the goals. Those militias are all idle. They repaired to TC, I guess. Should send them back. Haskell's moving in, but Rubenstock has a lot of long swords. Ooh, Eddie with a really nice army now. Can he take the TC down? I think Eddie is just sending all his army, but same military numbers. And there's the first Scorpion away from. From Rubenstock actually, so is uh, thinking about uh, attacking big groups and these scorpions, only one can do some damage already. Long swordsman against Tuskers, look at that big ass fight, check the military numbers, this is huge. TC with fully uh, full of villagers is attacking the long swordsman and Eddie's numbers are going down faster. This is not looking good, he's uh, taking way too much damage, he has to go back now. This was not a good fight without siege, this was not preferable from Eddie. Rubenstock now, except for gold, looking good. Eddie's still low on everything. Thing. Oh my god, Rubenstock, 1k5 score lead and Eddie, 79 villages, but Rubenstock managed to go up to 102, so he boomed better uh, when they had like the same village numbers. Eddie pretty much stopped. He's not producing any more villages right now. This is not good. And Rubenstock was able to produce villages and military units. Handcart now coming in from Rubenstock, very important upgrade as well. And we're going to see another fight with that one scorpion behind. Uh, not fight not happening yet. Long swordsman and more scorpions actually on the way. And what is Eddie going to do now? Does he have a siege workshop actually? Yeah, that's one siege workshop th still there. Mangan coming up. Makes sense. Big fight happening between the long swordsman. The Huskars not fighting. The monk can't really do a lot here. A single monk can only start to heal. Wow, look at this. That's like 160 infantry units fighting in one spot. I think the winner of this fight may actually be able to take the game right now. And looks like Eddie is. 15 military units behind, the Scorpion still doing a lot of damage, Rubenstock apparently able to win this fight here, Eddie is on 15, Rubenstock on 50 plus units, is this the game, oh my god, Eddie calling Chi Chi, Rubenstock dethroning Eddie, now Master of Arena 4, with an impressive defensive fight, 30 against no military units, and then he was able to come back from hell, I have no idea how he did that, but Eddie has been beaten on Arena, on Goth War here, in a best of 5, what an amazing series, possibly one of the best I've ever seen, not in the way Eddie performed, but uh, like in coming back and forth and that, wow, that huge comeback from Rubenstock. Big respects, actually. Hope you enjoyed the series. See you in the next games. GG.